since I've been getting more and more interested in mobile filmmaking, I decided to do something any responsible adult would do. I got three different phone gimbals just so I could compare them because why not? You see, for me as a filmmaker, it usually takes around a minute to understand whether the gimbal is good or not. The materials it's built out of, the motor strength, motor torque, the way it feels in hand, the way it pans, tilts, stuff like that. And because I've tried dozens of gimbals, I've become very critical of them and rarely ever am fully satisfied. Fun fact, most people who send me messages are either beginners in filmmaking or people who kind of want to get into filmmaking but aren't really sure where to start. So that's why today I'm inviting my friend George, who is not a filmmaker, to test out these gimbals and give his first impressions as well as try to get some cinematic shots with them. And after all this, I will be giving my honest thoughts about these gimbals as well. <laughs> What's up guys? This is my first vlog, you know what I'm saying? I'm just kidding. Like I'm gonna start moving and then like I'm gonna say one, two, three, and then and when I start moving you do a backflip. Okay, ready? One, two, three, okay, go. Okay, you wanna take like a like a video together? Hey what's up guys? Yo, Yo what's up? What's what's going on? Okay, that's cool. Uh, this is interesting kind of uh, uh, like thing to do. Can you do another backflip? No? <laughs> yeah, goodbye! <laughs> Bye, have a great time! <laughs> wait! <laughs> wait, wait, where are you going? <laughs> wait, wait, wait! No, sir. <laughs> and walk. Uh, first thing, it feels really nice in the hand. Uh, the stabilization, like like in this position, and how it followed, it felt kind of intuitive. But when it was like upside down like this, it was kind of all over the place a little bit for me. You know, it was a bit difficult. It was pretty easy to work with it, except for the main button. It was I don't I didn't understand exactly what it does. Build quality is pretty decent, yeah. But the operations, uh, some of them are pretty nice and like decent, but uh, some of them were kind of off for me, you know, it was like a little bit uh, not intuitive, I'd say. Other than that, it was, I, I think it's, it's okay. It feels like pretty decent in the hand. The build quality is also nice, but this thing, the handle, it feels uh, a little too small for my hand. Honestly, the upside down motion, for example, as I had with the previous one, actually was pretty decent. Like, uh, it, it, it felt more intuitive and it felt more controlled for me. Actually, I didn't try out any modes, but the buttons feel intuitive. Yeah, they're uh, way more comfortable. This back button is way more comfortable uh, and it like fixes the issues much easier. Like I don't have to use my, my finger, for example, like, uh, the, like the thumb because it, that felt awkward. And this button right here that I can kind of control the camera movement a little bit, that was also like more responsive. But other than that, this uh, is like a really solid choice because for me, because the, this function, for example, worked really great as well, you know? Um, so 
that's all I can say. And the orbit shots were also like pretty decent and like smooth for me. Except for the three at times close up. It was a bit stuttery. Like, you know? Okay. I'm, I'm, I think, I don't know if this is an illusion, but I feel like it's a little bit not uh, straight. Yo, yo, what's up, what's going on? <laughs> I'm in the from another city. <laughs> This, this feels really nice. You have to do it again, bro. The same thing you did. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, right off the bat, the, the handle is, for, for this example, it's like the best because it just feels, in my hand, it feels perfect. The build quality seems really solid. Followed in three times zoom, it followed the subject really nicely. It didn't have this kind of a stuttery kind of a following, you know, situation. It was not like this, it was smooth. Also, for some reason, when I was running, it was easier to run with this one. When I was following the, the guy and the subject, when I was following him, it felt, easier and also for some reason it felt it was easier to see in the in the phone what I was doing but at the same time the phone was catching everything I was like trying to film of course I ain't gonna leave you without testing these gimbals myself as well so what I decided to do is take a long walk around the city and choose three locations where I will be testing out the gimbals in the first location I tested out the iSteady X Performance-wise, it's actually really good. It handled uh, running like a champ. It was uh, able to withstand uh, a little bit of wind here and there. So yeah, performance-wise, you can also feel the motors that they're pretty strong. I like it. However, there's a major flaw. It tilts a lot on one side. If I'm running, just like this even, it's gonna be a tilting to one of the sides, which is not very good. And that's something I don't wanna see in my shots. The ergonomics are absolutely terrible on this gimbal, honestly. Like the buttons, they just, I don't like it. I only know how to turn it on. A single tap switches between the portrait and the landscape mode, but I double, uh, double press this button, it does nothing. I single tap it, it does nothing. Okay, maybe three times, one, two, three, nothing. I don't know how to enter lock mode or anything like that. So if a beginner would buy this gimbal, they would probably get confused as to what each button does. Second location was DJI. Anyway, let's talk about the DJI. I'm, I'm gonna straight up tell you that DJI uh, has been so far the best. Uh, it's just, the comfort is next level, the grip feels so nice. Like, it just sits in so nicely in my hand. Uh, I feel comfortable running with it. I think ergonomically wise, it's uh, perfect. It's so minimalistic. There's just uh, the joystick here and the mode button here. That's it. No weird buttons anywhere, no guessing the modes. You can just you can just get to the modes very quickly and very easily. So double tap, portrait mode, double tap, blah, blah, blah. Click it once, it's like a different mode. Click it again once, it's a different mode. To go, uh, to go into the lock mode, you just hold the trigger, which I think is the best way how to go in the lock mode. I just love it. When I picked up this product, it took me two minutes and I already knew everything about this gimbal and that is perfect. Okay, so now let's talk about the most important thing and that is performance. Performance is excellent. I love it. Especially uh, when I'm doing these uh, three to five times zoomed in shots with the gimbal and the phone, it just looks so good and uh, you don't really see a lot of that stuttering. It's just the motors feel powerful, they feel super smooth. One of my favorite features, which immediately makes the user experience a lot better, is this. You can just... Magnets. Magnets. What I personally don't like, and it's kind of bothering me a little bit, is this. So when I turn it on, it turns on really quickly, no weird shakes, that's good. But if I want to go into an inverted mode, I don't know, it feels really weird and uh, 
it, it just doesn't move the way I want it to move, you know? It feels like I don't have control over it. And last but not least, the third location was Smooth Q3. First, my favorite thing is the inverse mode. I really like it because uh, it just listens to me. It feels like it's a part of my hand, you know, whether as the uh, iSteady and the DJ, they just felt a little bit too random, like as if I didn't have full control over it. So when it comes to Julian's gimbal, it does feel like I have full creative control over it and that's what I like. Uh, the other thing I like, I would say is just, uh, especially when I put it in lock mode and pan follow mode, even when I'm running fast, I don't see the, uh, any weird tilting going on because both on iSteady and DJI, you can see the tilting, you know, it's tilting to one of the sides when you're running quickly. But here, uh, it's pretty safe to say that it uh, handles like a champ. I do prefer DJI's way of handling the ergonomics because uh, I just hate pressing the mode once, twice, three times. It's cool that you can press the trigger to switch between the pan follow and the follow mode, which are my two most used uh, modes. But uh, yeah, I, I do miss that. You know, once you get used to the DJI is like holding the trigger to go into lock mode, it, it's hard to go back. When it comes to the apps, the DJI's app was, uh, I personally liked it the best because it was the simplest. Jin's uh, app is also really nice. Um, but it does stutter a bit, especially when I turn on all those tracking features and stuff like that. The app suddenly runs at like 10 frames per second, which is uh, not very cool. I know they like to prioritize iPhone users, but I ain't an iPhone user. I'm an Android user, so I would love for people not to forget about the Android users, you know. And I really don't like the fact that they made the grip so small. Like one of my fingers is touching the tripod legs and it's such an uncomfortable feeling. It, it drives me nuts, actually. So yeah, just because DJI has a hundred times better grip, I do prefer that gimbal overall because this gets really tiresome after using it for like 10 minutes or so. Uh, Performance-wise, I gotta be honest with you, DJI in general held the best. In the conclusion, these are my honest thoughts. If you're on a tight budget, I'd recommend going for the Juin Smooth Q3, which is 89 US dollars. You're still getting roughly the same performance as the DJI, all the needed functions not only on the gimbal itself, but in the app as well, time lapses, hyperlapses, filters, tracking, and so on. However, I do not recommend getting the iSteady X. Whilst the build quality of it is solid, the functionality and ergonomics is, in my opinion, terrible. And often you will not understand which mode you are in and what to press to get to a specific mode. Even after using it for two hours, I was still getting extremely confused and thus wasted a lot of time. It's just... I didn't like this gimbal at all. The reason why I can't show you any time lapses or hyperlapses from iSteady X is because the app simply didn't work. It was crashing a lot and thus I couldn't get any footage. But if you want the best performance with the best grip, the best build quality, I'd recommend getting yourself the DJI Osmo Mobile 4. There is no denying that it works really well and what I like about the DJI the most is the fact that the gimbal moves not only very smoothly, but slowly as well. The Julian Smooth Q3 is fine, but when it comes to the follow mode, I think it operates a little bit too quickly for my liking. Even if you go in the app and switch the settings to the lowest speed, it's still a little bit too fast for me, honestly. From the second you pick up the DJI, it feels like you already know the ins and outs of the gimbal, which is awesome. However, it costs 150 US dollars, which is still a good deal. However, Smooth Q3 is almost half the price. So if the budget isn't an issue, go for the DJI. But even if you go for the Smooth Q3, I promise you will not lose anything and still will be able to get dope shots. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully I gave you some positive vibes and you know the drill. Peace out.